Hello students. In the following paragraph of the chapter Chief Seattle's speech, we find that Chief Seattle is saying that we will think over your proposal and when we decide we will let you know. But should we accept it? Even if I accept, Chief Seattle is saying that even if I accept, I place a right now condition, a kind of a condition he is placing before the white settlers. So, he is saying that even if I accept, I place a right now condition before you that we will not be denied of the privilege um, of being molested or, or of the molestation of visiting at any time to the tombs of our ancestors. So, at any time, uh, the maybe you are giving us a particular territory to reside in. But at any time, at any point of time, we, our men can come, our men and women can come, our children can come to seek the blessings of, the, of their ancestors, to the grave of their ancestors where they are buried, to the tomb of their ancestors. And that time, you will not stop my men, my women, my children. This is the condition. Uh, so, he is saying that even if I accept, Please, I am putting this condition right in front of you. You have to follow this. You must allow us and not harass us to visit the tombs of our ancestors, our friends and children. So, so our friends and children should not be stopped on their way to visit the tombs of our ancestors. That is what he is saying. The privilege has to be given to us. That what he is placing as a condition before the white settlers. But why? What is the rational behind? The rational is that, the rational is what is a part of the sacred of the soil is the estimation of my people. Every hillside, every plain, every valley, grove, every bit of the soil is having the glory of our past, has been made sacred by this. By this means by the ashes of the ancestors. Even the rocks which seem to be dumb and dead to the white settlers even they are witness and they are connected to the memories of the glorious past of the Native Americans. So, the, even, the dumb, even the dumb rocks are also filled with thrill. See, the silent shore and uh, the, the, the means even the rocks. See, over here it is mentioned even the rocks which uh, the silent shore thrill with memories. Sorry, even the rocks which seem to be dumb and dead as they swelter in the sun along the silent shore thrill with memories of stirring events connected with the lives of my people and the very dust upon which you know stand responds more lovingly to their footsteps than yours because it is rich with the blood of our ancestors and our bare feet are conscious of the sympathetic touch. So, by this by stating that by putting forward the condition that your men should not harass my children, my friends, my men, my women uh, to stop visiting to the grave of their ancestors. What is the rationale behind that? That is also giving that means the soil, every hillside, every plain, every valley, grove, every bit of soil is having carrying the glory of the past of the Native Americans. The soil has been made sacred by the glories of the ancestors, even the rocks which seem to be dumb and dead. To the white settlers now, they are even the witness and are connected with the memories of the glorious past of the Native Americans. The rocks may seem dumb, found, dumb and dead to the uh, white settlers, but actually they are thrilled with the memories of the glorious past of the red men or the Native Americans. Right. So, this is how, this shows how close the Native Americans are to the nature. They are, they, this, this speech is actually student as, as I mentioned in my first video that this speech is a bittersweet plea for respect of Native American rights and the environmental value. So, it shows through the speech that the chief Seattle, the, the speech of the chief Seattle that they have great reverence for the nature also. They are so much attached, so much close to the nature. The chief Seattle also adds that the dust, the soil where the white settlers were standing will respond more lovingly to my people than the footsteps of the white settlers. Because why? 
because our ancestors are still very much the part of this land. Their blood is mixed with this soil and that is why the soil is responding more lovingly and the soil will respond more lovingly to the footsteps of the Native Americans and not to the white settlers and not the white settlers. So, he is, he is saying that as we stand bare feet on this soil, we are aware of the sympathetic, loving and affectionate touch of our ancestors. Right? Now, uh, in the second last paragraph, uh, in the second last paragraph, it has been said that, uh, just a minute, yes, uh, it has been said that the connection is strong. The connection is strong. He means to say that the dead warriors, the loving mothers and the young maidens are, and even the little children who may have had only a short brief life over here, they all love this beautiful land. They love its peacefulness, its stillness, its quietness. In the evening, they all will come and greet their deads. They will come and greet their ancestors, but will return at the end. A time might come when the white settlers will consider as myth, a man uh, will consider the red man as a myth, a man of past, right? Non-existing. Jessica means uh, the, the, the red Indians have vanished, are non-existing from the history. It may happen so that the white settlers might think so, might treat so. The history, the glorious history uh, will fade away for, uh, and the Native Americans will be washed away from the memories, from the histories of this earth. That is, Chief Seattle is just assuming out of anguishment that uh, it may happen so. Then also, this island will be full of, full of spirits will be crowded with invisible spirits of my people, of my tribe. So, he is, he is paying the tribute to his ancestors, to the spirits of the ancestors. In all the earth, there is no place dedicated to solitude. When your children will think they are the only owner of this place, when they will think that the pathway, they are, the pathless woods they are walking, they are all alone. In reality, they will not be alone. In reality, they will not be alone. They will be accompanied by the spirits of our ancestors because this land will be crowded. This land is, is crowded with the invisible spirits of, of my people, of my tribe. In all the earth, there is no place for solitude. This shows that they believe in spirits. In all the places on earth, there is no place for solitude. This shows that they believe in spirits in nature, which is why the chief Seattle says that there is no place on this entire earth where people can live alone. At night, when everything is quiet and you think that there is nobody on streets, nobody in the city or in the village, the field, store, shop or the highways will not be deserted. In fact, they will be thronged, they will be crowded with the returning spirits of my people. This is because we once lived here and we still love this beautiful land. The white man will thus never be alone. Now, in the very last paragraph, what has been said that let them be just and deal kindly with my people for the dead are not powerless. Dead, did I say? Dead, did I say? There is no death, only a change of world. So, in this last few lines of his speech, what Chief Seattle is saying that Chief Seattle gives a warning to the white settlers that they must be just to the dead, they must treat their ancestors with full respect, they must treat the ancestors of the Native Americans with full respect. Maybe they are dead, but they are not powerless. So, he is saying that uh, the white settlers must be just to the dead, but do not think that the death renders a dead, dead powerless. I repeat, they do not think that the death renders a dead powerless. So, the white settlers should be kind and just to our people, our ancestors. Although we are near to our end, in fact, we will be dead one day. 
and going to be dead very soon. We will fade away. But the white settlers must remember that the deads are not powerless. Then he goes on to say that did I say dead? Dead did I say rather? He is saying that dead did I say which means that they are not actually going to die. He says that there is no death. There will be, they will be merely, there will be merely change of world. From this world to that world, there will be a mere change of world from their physical state to the spiritual state. Not maybe not in a physical body they will reside in this land. Maybe in the form of a non-material body that is through spirit. They will continue to live in their own land. So, do not think that deeds 